R.J. Barrett was benched down the stretch. He's trending on Twitter. Do you side with Tibbs and think R.J. should have been benched? And with that trade deadline a little over a week away, do you think that holds bigger implications? With the trade deadline coming, so let me start off with, yes, I do think that benching RJ was, was appropriate last night because his defense wasn't there. Um, offense was just, eh, even though he tried to get it going within the third and fourth quarter of last night, I felt like he could have done a better overall game. But defensively, you know, he was just not there when it, when we needed him in critical moments. He's taken a step back from last season as being uh, one of our better defenders for this team. So I wasn't against that, especially when you have Emmanuel Quickly and Quentin Grimes, who are your two top perimeter defenders. And Emmanuel Quickly, you know, we're going to look at whether it's Grimes, who's part of the starting rotation, or Emmanuel Quickly. Usually it's been those guys who've been juggling back and forth in those in those moments in the fourth quarter. And Grimes is a starter, so no one's going to look at it as Grimes losing his spot in that in the final moments. But it's going to be look, looked at as Emmanuel quickly who surplanted RJ last night. And to be honest, I'm fine with that because once again, you're talking about Emmanuel quickly, who's one of your top players so far on this team. Just when he touches the court, he's just so impactful. Here are some uh, more statistics for you, Brandon. Just looking at like the last 15 games through the last 15 games. Emmanuel quickly is shooting 52% from the field, close to 11 attempts per game. He's shooting 38% from three off of about 5%, uh, five attempts per game. And he's shooting 83% from the free throw line, averaging about four rebounds and three assists. He's a plus five right now during, during that time. So you see how impactful he is. Even in the first quarter when RJ got into foul trouble, Emmanuel quickly comes on, hits a three, the game automatically changes. So I'm okay with Emmanuel quickly closing over RJ Barrett last night. Now, with regards to the trade deadline, I hope it doesn't make that much of an impact for this for the front office to feel like they have to go out and go get someone like OG Adenobi and, and really just deplete their war chest because I don't see OG as someone who's going to put you over that top. Maybe OG solidifies his team as a top six team to, to make the playoffs without having to go through the play-in, but I don't think he is that player that's really going to take it to that next, uh, that next level where you're competing with guys like the Celtics, and uh, the Philadelphia 76ers in a seven-game series, which really matters. I think this team, what the, the front office should do is complete the season with this roster, maybe do a little little maneuvering around the edges. You know, you got to move Cam Reddish just because of the situation here. See if you can go get another wing defender. Uh, as Ian Begley of SNY noted, uh, uh, Sadiq Bey is maybe someone that uh, could be – could be had. So maybe you go out there and add someone off the bench for a wing for wing depth. But as of right now, I don't really need to see major changes for the New York Knicks. I think they should finish the season right now and then figure out how to retool this offseason.